Okay, it's a pleasure to be here. Thanks to the organizer for organizing such a wonderful and exciting conference. It was a wonderful week. Um, so our guiding light uh, has always been the black hole. Um, now, the black hole is a very confusing object. I mean, it was very confusing classically and quantum mechanically. It's very confusing, but we've learned a uh, lot of aspects. The study of black holes uh, reminds me of a movie and just, uh, oh. okay, well, this is not working. The pictures are not showing, technical person. Anyway, there was here a nice picture of a uh, movie, Solaris. I wonder if any one of, how many people have seen the movie? Oh, well, that was good. That was good. I haven't seen the movie myself, but, uh, <laughs> I, <laughs> but, but I did read the book, so I... I there are pictures here, not showing. Uh, no, it's the PowerPoint. Okay, well, it does. Okay, well, there will be pictures that won't. I'll describe the pictures. Hopefully, it will be. <laughs> okay, so but I'll describe first this uh, this book. So there are scientists that are studying a weird planet that has some ocean. Let's say a dark ocean. The ocean seems to have display weird features. It uh, seems to have some kind of intelligence of its own, uh, but they don't manage to communicate with the ocean. And the ocean keeps uh, popping up uh, their worst, worst nightmares. They, they, the things they, they, they don't, they, they done wrong perhaps. They, you now in physics maybe the things you haven't really understood, the areas of physics you haven't understood, keep uh, showing up as things you need to understand to understand black holes. Um, and, uh, okay, so uh, th these people are, okay, now no, th let's leave it like this. So, now, so these people got uh, driven crazy by this, so some committed suicide and so on. That, that hasn't gotten so bad. And, um, <laughs> but uh, one lesson is that uh, we have to stand uh, far away. So these people were standing here. There, were, there was a, here a picture of three people standing, standing close to the black hole, and they were driven crazy. But... Um, Okay, this one this didn't come out either. Okay, so here was a picture of a black hole inside ADS, and we just stand at the boundary of ADS. We stand very far away from the black hole. Then we stand on a solid platform, and we can ask questions, and we are less likely to be dri driven crazy. And there were a few things that we understood by uh, doing that. And so we understood that black holes are ordinary quantum systems with uh, finite entropy. Of course, the computation of the entropy goes back to these D-brain models and Strominger and Buff and so on. Um, but here we can un understand the dynamics and so on as seen from the outside, and we have some precise rules uh, which govern these dynamics. And we think that the fact that black holes behave in this way, uh, so obeying the rules of quantum mechanics, is a definite and general prediction of quantum gravity or string theory. Um, now, um, there are still many things we don't understand, so we don't know how to reconcile this completely with the gravity description. In particular, even if we ask questions about far away, uh, we don't know how to calculate the small corrections uh, that we expect to simple boundary observables that are required by boundary unitarity. So this uh, should somehow follow from the bulk. They are, they are small, so they are non-perturbative effects, so it's not a surprise uh, we cannot easily compute them, but we'd like to understand them more precisely. Or we could also talk about the order one corrections to complex observables. So, so far the understanding we have is that, well, these are, these are expected to arise. There should be some corrections, but we don't know how to understand them clearly from the bulk point of view. Um, we only know that the bulk theory fails at uh, this level. Um, um, now the question is how to leave this in the, the boundary. So. Um, the, here was a nice picture of the interior. Oh, well, anyway, so it's dangerous to leave the boundary. As we see, we could be driven a little crazy. But it, there, there is a potentially very high payoff. And uh, the interior is uh, perhaps approximate. I mean, we know that um, any observer in the interior probably cannot make measurements more precisely than e to the minus s, so perhaps the approximation is essential in getting to the interior, and that's a feature of many of the ideas for describing the interior. 
and we'd like to understand when the interior either exists or fails to exist, uh, where there is a singularity and where there is anything beyond the singularity. And um, also, we like, if we understood, I mean, a proper understanding of the interior should tell us something about the singularity. And um, now most people, uh, and probably myself included, would think that perhaps there isn't anything beyond the singularity. But, uh, well, history, we should learn from history. And certainly Schwarzschild probably and Einstein and so on didn't believe there was anything uh, beyond the Schwarzschild so-called singularity, which is the black hole horizon. Uh, but then it was understood that there was something. So maybe we will be surprised again and we'll find uh, there is something beyond the singularity that we'll need to, the proper understanding of the quantum theory to, to, to learn. Um, and, uh, and that's why we, not understanding this problem, of course, uh, prevents us from learning lessons from cosmology. Uh, in some sense, ADS-CFT, we can view it as an experiment in need of theory. Um, so in some ways, we have seen through some indirect arguments, mainly thanks to the D-brains that Polchinski discovered, uh, that certain strongly interacting quantum systems behave as if they had a local uh, boundary, bulk dual. Um, now here, I think in the field, there is a kind of um, schizophren schizophrenic relationship. So some, it's often said that, well, the bulk emerges and is some kind of approximate uh, object. but also, we think that string theory is a theory of everything, and in particular should be a theory of the bulk, so it should be some equivalent theory uh, in the bulk that is completely equivalent to the boundary theory, and independently, in particular independently defined from the boundary theory. And hopefully we'll understand what that theory is. Um, so the question is, uh, in, this is the same question, whether we should view it as some kind of phase of matter, some approximation, or whether it's really a theory of everything. Uh, and in this case, it would be really a theory of everything because we can uh, model any system by, if, if it existed. Um, now, of course, uh, th these complicated phases are, took a long time to be understood. So for example, superconductivity took a long time. And there was a VCS theory that uh, sort of miraculously was, uh, is understandable within some kind of uh, weakly coupled description. Um, and there's still high TC superconductivity that we don't fully understand, and it seems to be also connected to black holes in some many ways. Uh, um, now, that here I wanted to put some, some sort of speculation. What is in orange is our speculations. So the thermophil doubles looks very much like an energy superconductor, um, so where the phase is like r roughly like the time between the left and the right uh, systems. So the, the connection to superconductivity is not, not too crazy, but we should understand uh, these other kinds of superconductors. Now, there is some level where we've seen this uh, beautiful metamorphosis between the chain of gluons and the strings, and we've, uh, we've seen these uh, beautiful plots where we can flow, follow the, this transformation in uh, great detail, but I think uh, we still have the challenge of extracting the general lesson from these computations. So as an analogy, we would say that we had the Onsager solution of the Ising model. That was an exact explicit solution that uh, was describing the phase transition of the Ising model. And then from this analyzing this solution, uh, we understood that Wilson understood certainly better the renormalization group as the general principle. So we know bulk locality requires very strong interactions. Um, and that's uh, obvious from the bulk point of view. Here was a formula saying that uh, the dimensions of higher spin operators should be very large. And one question we ask is, well, how, um, sh how should we tune the quantum system to get there? So how generic is this phenomenon? And we don't understand. Um, and we certainly need uh, this bulk locality to really talk about the interior of the black hole since the proper time to the singularity is less than the radius of ADS. Um, of other the radius of ADS. So we need to resolve this. Um, now, there are many ideas for getting into the bulk, uh, and uh, each, ideas, each of these ideas has very nice features and some, uh, some, some drawbacks, and probably what we will need to do is uh, to combine them. And one important feature is that the bulk is relativistic, so we have this local special relativity that uh, is hardwired to gravity, of course, and 
we have the equivalence principle. And we are, I think we are not using this enough or we're not incorporating it enough in our descriptions. And certainly, for example, tensor networks ca capture some aspects of the bulb, but not this aspect. Uh, the bootstrap uh, certainly captures the global conformal symmetry, and so that symmetry is incorporated, but not somehow enough uh, this bulb locality. Um, for example, there are all these uh, higher spin operators whose dimensions are uh, already encoded by lower spin, so we're not this redundant information. Um, so it should be something simpler. Um, there is the whole discussion of subalgebras and modular Hamiltonians and so on. And this is an interesting discussion because there we have an exact boost symmetry, which is the symmetry of generated by modular Hamiltonians. And that seems to be probably highly relevant. And that's, well, of course, why it's, it's been studied. Um, and so on. Um, and of course, uh, this uh, feature uh, is uh, essential for understanding the gravity and thermodynamic connections. Um, so now what will happen into the f in the future? Well, here I had a nice picture of uh, an Old Testament prophet um, from a Bible, biblical prophet. And of course, in this land, it's, uh, it's difficult to be a prophet. Uh, and um, so we'll start as, as those prophets with the Bible. So it says that God created the universe, and God created mind in his own image. And um, well, here was a picture of uh, God playing with dice. And that's uh, one interpretation of uh, what being in, uh, what us being in the image of God means. But what really means is that, uh, or a better interpretation is that we should cr be creative. And we can now create certain universes. Um, and these universes are useful uh, with a purpose. They uh, we can use black holes as sources of information for strongly coupled systems, as opposed to being sinks of information. And in some sense, we have universal computers. We have universes that compute things for us. Um, the ones we have so far are uh, sort of classical computers, because we have a classical uh, universe in the bulk. Um, but our universes are not nice to bulk observers. There is a singularity. Um, and one question is, how do we build a comfortable universe with growing space uh, for everyone. It was a nice picture of cosmology here. Um, and uh, so the idea is that uh, by combining all these things, uh, well, one would like to derive really holography. Holography is a theory of the whole bulk theory. Um, of course, whole, the other, whole, the usual spelling is just a Greek word, but we'd like to translate into to plain English that we can understand it so that it's not all Greek to us. Sorry for the Greeks here. Um, <laughs> And um, we like to understand whether there is something similar to a quantum equivalence principle or some principle that uh, governs this theory. And so this theory would be truly a universal, perhaps, quantum computer, or certainly concepts of quantum computers, quantum computation, quantum information, seem to be crucial for, uh, for, for this problem. And it was uh, emphasized in many of these uh, developments. So an even wilder speculation is that once we find this, we'll even uh, get a more powerful computer and tools that will have further applications, such as, for example, neural networks that are even better than the ones we have now. So now there is the whole range of artificial neural networks that will drive us all out of business. So our goal is to drive them out of business with uh, better. Um, OK, so hopefully we'll find this before the end of time. And uh, there was another picture here of cosmology. And um, unfortunately, my time is up, and thank you.